YouTube, good morning everybody. Welcome aboard Drunk Pilot here. Happy Tuesday to you all. Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here we are. It's right here. Of course. It's about 3.30 in the morning, so you're going to have to forgive me. Uh, I haven't quite had my caffeine yet, and I'm a little bit on the fritz. And also, this is my fourth flight in this aircraft, and I have yet to get a steady experience uh, what aircraft am I talking about? I'm talking about the INI builds A300. So, the first flight I did from JFK to Greensboro, and I sheared my vertical stabilizer off. If you guys know anything about aircraft history, the A300 was kind of notorious for that. Uh, I was about five minutes away from touchdown, and as I was descending, I was um, just making sure everything was ready. I think my flaps were at, my slats were at 15 degrees and, you know, just getting everything prepped. And just all of a sudden, veered, autopilot disconnected. I veered down to the left, nosedive, and could not recover. While I'm looking at the footage, I saw Whoa. that once I looked Whoa. up in the flight what? deck, and I'll show you guys, my rudder was fully depressed to the left, uh, so I must have had a ghost input or something. So, that was experience number one. That was Saturday. So, Sunday, um, I did another flight from JFK to Greensboro. My frame rates were not acceptable. I did a full flight. I made the whole way and everything was okay. It was just dog water. So I did not end up posting that video. So uh, yesterday, Monday, I can't quite do that finger. Monday, um, I did a flight from JFK to Memphis and as I was getting things ready, I was descending, I think I was about 19,000, 18,000, right about transition level. I was dialing in my course, and as I was doing that, somehow my knob, whoa, instead of dialing in the course, it sped my simulator all the way up to the fastest it could go and when you do that it drops your frame rates you can't do anything and what basically happened? i was in times 128 or i don't know what the max is Nothing for flight sim but i was at least at times 128 and descending and it's Bad like, things happened, I couldn't do anything. Just all of a sudden. So that was another failed flight. I had something happen. Yeah. Oh. I'm down to like zero. And so here we are, Tuesday morning. Enough of the chit chat. We are going to go from. JFK to Memphis, altitude of 28,000 feet. It's going to be at two hours and 24 minutes, excuse me, altitude of 30,000 feet. Things have changed up on me. Hey, two hours and 24 minutes. Uh, we do have some weather down south in Memphis. So what my plan is, I'm going to go to Memphis and then I'm going to fly on over to Greensboro because the weather is supposed to hit us. Uh, at least the wind later on in the day. We've got wind advisory, flood advisory, all that fun stuff. So if you guys are in the southeast, make sure to watch out. Uh, so without further ado, I think we are ready to hop on in to the flight deck and I can give you guys a brief introduction to the A300. Also did a lot of configuring on my end. So we should have a pretty stable flight and upon first view of the cold and dark, you can see there's a really bright EFB. It looks beautiful. A lot of settings, a lot of things you can go through. 
It of course has sim brief integration and uh, a lot of things that you would expect from a higher end developer. You got your performance. One good thing, you also have aircraft maintenance. So when you get enough hours down, down the road with the same aircraft, you can maintain it. Uh, one of the biggest things I've been in is the ground equipment page. I've already opened everything up, pretty much everything. So we'll leave it there and go ahead and turn our batteries on. And we'll apply external power. Turn on our dome lights. And our nav and logos can come on. As the aircraft is powering up, let you guys see an outside view. It does look like a stunning aircraft. And it performs really well. Um, mechanics wise I just feel like they could do a little bit more optimization but maybe that was on my end so maybe I should give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt all right so first things first thrust levers idle engine fuel control is shut off for both parking brake is set speed brake is up, flaps are up, landing gear is down, weather radar is off. Okay, so taking a look here, we've got IRS faults, which is normal, just powered on the aircraft. We can clear those. Yep, our doors are not closed. Clear those and some more IRS and ops which is fine that being said back up to the overhead go ahead and arm our emergency exit lights give our enunciator lights a test and you guys let me know what this guy says He's saying wind shear, right? It's like the 80th time I'm hearing that. I'm pretty sure he's saying wind shear. All right, that's good. Go ahead and put our IRSs into nav. And while that is being done, I will take a look at my weight and balance. And I can do it from SimBrief. That's another good thing from this weight and balance. You can customize a lot of cargo, which you do have a view of. So we're just going to go custom from SimBrief. We're going to update and we're going to apply. And it's going to tell me that it's refueling. But you should be able to see up here and you do so that is good no smoking can go to on as we work our way up flight reporter ground control can come on as we work our way over Turn up my uh, cockpit tip And we'll work our way through window heat, propane. And you can try and turn these switches on. I know that pitch trim will turn right back off. That's just part of the automated systems. Once you get those online, they will stick. Okay, our overhead looks good.
and taking a look at our ATIS VTAR 3043. here cage our standby attitude And I need to start up some supplementary apps. I think I only need to start that one. These pretzels are making me thirsty. You are going to have to forgive me. I got my flu shot and my COVID shot yesterday. And my arm is feeling a little bit sore if I'm not able to, to handle the, the Airbus yoke. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. So, hopefully I'll be able to. Let's go ahead and get our clearance. FedEx 405 on information Romeo, gate 246, request clearance to Memphis. And you're not going to do it. You're not going to read back to me? One three one point eight five FedEx four zero five. FedEx four. Why? I'll try and get this again. So the only real good flight I've had, not really haven't had any good flight. The only flights I've had successful were from Bozeman to JFK in the fly-by-wire, and I was having bad frames on that, arriving into JFK. And then the flight from JFK to Greensboro on Sunday. So today is now the 9th of January, 
and this will be my third hopefully successful flight I'm gonna make sure to monitor the situation closely and I'm gonna close out of ATC because it is being a big old poopy let me try this again FedEx 405 with information Romeo parking 246 request clearance. FedEx 405 clear to KMEM via JFK 51104 lights departure. Expect that to the Romeo Bravo Victor and then pass by climb to 13000. Expect flight level 28. Ghost is here. 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is 135.9. Two, five, zero, two. Three, zero, point, four, three. All right, we want zero four left. Actually, zero four left has a really bad divot in it. Am I seeing things? zero six zero at like four knots I'm just gonna go three one right Almost the same read back I got yesterday. Clear to Memphis via Vector's departure. Runway 31 right. Climb and maintain 11000. Expect 280 10 minutes after. Squawk 2302. Uh, altimeter 3043. Contact. Departure 135.9. FedEx 405. FedEx 405. Read back correct. Contact ground control. I think it's 2502. 131.85 FedEx 405. Okay. Yeah, and I know. I read it out of order. I'm telling you, the past couple days, my readbacks were spot on. And of course, those videos are not going to be posted. It's not fair. Still getting fuel. All right. Now, we'll go ahead and go on down here. We can go to our menu and A cars and request from Simbrief, and it will automatically pull it with the exception of our cost index and our flight number. So cost index is 100, which it has been for the past four days. And my flight level is 300, that's correct. FDX405.
and we should be able to click on this little boy. Good to go. Now we can go over to our flight plan, KJFK, STID, and 3-1, right? Transponder to 2502 FedEx 405. Actually, they're saying 13 left is going to be a better departure. FedEx 405, contact clearance on 135.05. 135.05 FedEx 405. It's going to be an easier departure for me. FedEx 405, clear to KMEM via JFK 51113, left departure. Expect exit Romeo Bravo Victor, and then as fine. Climb to 11,000. Expect fly level 280 within 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is 135.9. Walk 2502. Altimeter 3043. Altimeter 3043, FedEx 13 left, JFK 5, insert RBV, we're going to take out this manual discontinuity and be good to go, pretty much on that part. We do need to go to our... Yes! Altimeter 3043, FedEx 405. No. fully fueled and so now we can turn on our APU that would include turning on our fuel pumps FedEx 405 did you read? IRS is still aligning Your fuel weight will automatically go in there, and so will block fuel. Cleared to Memphis via the JFK 5 departure, runway 13 left, climb and maintain 11000, expect 280 10 minutes after. Departure frequency 139.45, squad 2502, altimeter 3043, FedEx 405. FedEx 405, did you read? Oh. FedEx 405, read back correct. Contact ground APU is running. APU bleed can come on. All right, now we can go to our performance. One three left. 
sync up everything. Three, three, four and a half. And we are on a 10,000 foot runway. Flex 1048, 158, 158, 168. All right. And our V2 speed is based off of what we put in in the FCU. to go ahead and start buttoning up our doors. We're gonna flex takeoff, 48 degrees. Our IRSs are aligned. So the ground equipment. these bad boys turn off shocks while we're at it do that bad boy okay so we are ready to go FedEx 405 request startup and pushback you can come, come on FedEx 405 startup and pushback Startup and pushback approved. FedEx 405. Parking brake come off. Okay. And we are going to start number one. Click on you. I'm going to turn on my Lights.
Vehicle number one has been started. FedEx 405 request taxi. FedEx 405, taxi 5 Charlie Bravo to runway 13 left. Via Charlie Bravo, runway 13 left, FedEx 405. I'm gonna set my heading. Taxi lights almost non existent. They are an external view, not so much an internal view. Either that or I'm just blind. That could very well be it. FedEx 405. FedEx 405, runway 13 left, ready for departure. FedEx 405, line up runway 13 left. Lining up runway 13 left, FedEx 405. Looks like my runway turnoff is at least a little bit visible. Take that. Approaching. One. Archer three, side is clear. Bird side is clear. Raz verifies. On runway. 
FedEx 405, wind 060 at 3, runway 13 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 13 left, FedEx 405, see you. I think we are just about ready to go. The timer started and take off. Point nine or FedEx four zero five. FedEx four zero five climbing one one thousand. FedEx four zero five. Greater contact. Continue FJFK five departure climb two one one thousand. Clear for the JFK five departure climbing one one thousand. FedEx four zero five. Something is fighting me. Speeding. Right turn heading two two five, FedEx four zero five. We'll just call it an unrestricted climb.
I'm going to maintain flight level 200 at FedEx 405. Left turn heading 260, FedEx 405. Alright, we'll go ahead and turn our autopilot on. Proceeding as file, FedEx 405. Usually, this baby's sweet spot, which is kind of odd because you would think being a 300. is not set up so I'm just doing circles over JFK right now the cargo Maintain flight level 280, FedEx 405.
118.907, FedEx 405. What in the world is going on here? Enough of the scenery, guys. I think that's the LaGuardia. And Newark should be right off my nose. He's got himself figured out. I knew you could do it, buddy. So if you can see down here in the bottom left, keep on getting a pop-up saying power. That's a good thing. That means that I'm not being bottlenecked by my CPU. That means that my GPU is working hard and it's being limited by the power. Now if you were to see temp, like a pop-up for temp or something, that would not be such a good thing. 
that would mean that your GPU is being overheated, overhotted, over overwarmed. So a pop-up like that for power is good. Anything else? Um, voltage? No. Temp? No. No bueno. The power's good. So we're gonna leave it and I'll see you guys in about one hour and 30 minutes. See you. Alright guys, we are just about at our top of descent, maybe even past it. Um, I was reading an error message. I done, get, done got an IO crash. Deeply sorry you have encountered the Dunn I.O. crash. We are trying to recover so you can continue enjoying the simulation. Can you please help us fix this error by filling out the contact form? Okay. Done. Looks like everything's going okay, though. Besides the fact that my mouse is losing battery. But. Just make sure. Go ahead and hit our level change. Turn on our fasten seatbelt sign. Turn on our. Turn on our fasten seatbelt sign. Take a look at our arrival here. Need to be at 240, so. Center flight level 250, FedEx 405. Why does it sound like my volume is really low? And it looks like I need to be hitting... Huh? What are we looking at as far as our arrival? 18, right? Blues 3, BWG. Go ahead and plug that in. Eighteen right. Blues three. 
PWG insert. I need to be an Herod. Clear to Herod, heading 260, FedEx 405. Descending uh, really fast, actually. And I never actually put my gear in neutral. It's another thing you gotta look out for. Not that it will affect a whole lot. Rudder pedals look okay. I'm just gonna look at my flight controls. Yep. Gonna be a long taxi. Three hundred and forty one feet is our elevation. Pretty dark out since I left the metropolitan area.
go ahead and bring up I and I manager and take a look at our arrival meter. One eight zero at nine, nine statute miles of rain. Temperature nine, altimeter two nine or four zero. Okay. And since we were over there. I should see us coming in from over here. Axel is our next one. About 18 miles. Go ahead and get the numbers plugged in for 18 right. 109.9 is our frequency. Our course is 180. Just had to make sure that that knob will not accelerate like it did on me yesterday. This is exactly what happened to me yesterday. I went to go set my course and I spun my knob. Is that a euphemism? I spun my knob really quick and it just accelerated me all the way to the fastest it would go. So this time I went backwards so it would decelerate me and I only turned it one click just to make sure it was set to the right thing. And the weird part about it was that it's a Honeycomb Bravo, so if you guys know anything about the Bravo, it has two knobs. The first selector is for speed, course, heading, uh, vertical speed, and altitude. And so I was setting everything fine with the selector. I came back, I hit my knob on altitude, I downed my altitude, and then I switched over to speed, I downed my speed, and then I went over to course, and for some reason, it just, time accelerated me. I must have been in my menus or something between hitting that knob for the speed and the course. I just can't remember why I would be in there. I don't know why. But everything is good in there now. We got our course ILS. All right, now we can set our minimums, which is going to be 495. on there and take a look at my approach what did I say my wing was thirteen 
So we'll go plus three, eight. Planning flaps 30 slash 40, approach is 146. Switch over to profile. And slow this guy back down. We should show up here at speaker. Blues, we're going to be at 280. Speaker heading two four zero FedEx four zero five. Three zero four zero two zero four zero two nine three six. It's not even close. FedEx four zero five. Did you read?
FedEx 4 of the robot, did you read? FedEx 4 of the robot, Kirk Bravo Lima, uniform, Zulu, Zulu 3 star, Sex ILS, approach runway 1, main right. Clear for the Blues 3 arrival, Bravo Whiskey Golf, ILS approach runway 18 right, FedEx 405. Why aren't you reading my mic? Speed to 290 knots, FedEx 405. One two six decimal seven for FedEx four zero five. FedEx four zero five flight level fourteen thousand. Clear for the Blues 3 arrival, ILS approach runway 18 right, FedEx 405. Wait. Send in a one zero thousand altimeter three zero four three at speed to two eight zero knots FedEx four zero five. Speed to 230 knots, FedEx 405. FDX 
Descend in the 10,000, speed to 230 knots, FedEx 405. Sending one zero thousand FedEx four zero five. Heading 240, descending 5,000 feet, FedEx 405. Turn heading two four five FedEx four zero five. Heading 255, FedEx 405. Two five five FedEx four zero five. Heading 
255 FedEx 405. We are at 10,000. Okay, and I need to be 3,000 at Braille, and I'm not gonna make that. So I'm just gonna turn more to the right. Descending 2,000 feet, FedEx 405. We can turn our ILS on. Auto break can go to medium. See the airport out there. Heading 245, FedEx 405. I'm going to introduce some brakes. UPS 1382, maintain present altitude. Present altitude. UPS 1382. Heading 225, FedEx 405. Arm our localizer. Put some slides down. Heading 180, FedEx 405. Let me 
go ahead and go over here. Oh, take off approach. I'll approach. Sending 2000 FedEx 405. Bravo Romeo Alpha Lima Echo heading 190, descending 2,000 feet, FedEx 405. Approach runway 18 right, tower at the marker 1 through 8.4, FedEx 405. FedEx 405 on final runway 18 right. Altimeter 3043, speed to final approach speed, FedEx 405. Try and get a screenshot and it kills me. No. I swear, I'm gonna cry. I'm just gonna cry. I can so just sit here and cry. Four three eight. Line up runway three six right. FedEx one four three eight. Oh. Back. FedEx one four three eight. Wind one nine zero at one three. Runway three six right. Clear for takeoff. Runway three six right. Clear for takeoff. FedEx one four three eight.
likes to float. Exiting runway to the left, ground on 121.9 or FedEx 405. Okay guys, we made it. FedEx 405, request taxi to the gate. FedEx 405, taxi by Alpha November to Terminal 1, gate 42. Via Alpha November, FedEx 405. And we are speeding on the taxi. that screenshot even turn out? It did! Six forty two. Good job on the time.
ke zaman the view Overall good flight, except that scare. And I've got to figure out the, the crash. The done IO. Done IO crash. Just figured it was done. Hey, IO done, man. Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. I might have to find some uh, Memphis scenery if I keep on doing FedEx flights. Because this is not going to be good. The floating lights. ETA was 6.45, 6.44 right now, so we are okay. FedEx standards, not really, but we'll be all right. Not going to hurt my packages. Everything I get are on Prime. Did I say that? And fun fact for you, FedEx is the world's largest air transport nowadays. So if you guys thought it was UPS, think again. I need to have it like a car wash or something, you know? You just attach the plane to a tug, it's all in a line, and it just tows you down. And people unload the plane. I don't know where to park. We'll park nose to nose with homie. That is a triple seven. All right, APU is on, APU bleed is on. Get to go to work. Hooray me! All right. 
Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for the flight. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I'm definitely a lot more happy now that we got uh, some frame rate improvements. So, and that we actually made it on the ground this time. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a wonderful Tuesday, everybody. And love each other. And love yourselves. See you on the next one.